on real soon, real quick, guys. I know it's, hold on real quick, I'm trying to get this going. One second, I'm getting this straightened out.
just view it on my screen. I don't know why the LinkedIn event page isn't working. It should be. Um, one more second, and I will get this started. We've got 13 people in there. Good morning, everyone. I don't, know why, I don't know why the live stream isn't working on the LinkedIn event page, but it's not. But you can view it, and I put my link, or you can watch it from Josh or Angela's link. You can just pop those into the Good morning, everyone. Chat. Good morning. I don't Good. know why. So... Today we're going to be going over Expo 101, how to prepare for in-person expositions. Today I'm joined by Angela Florida and Megan Christian. Uh, Megan is our social media and content manager, and Angela is one of our highly talented sales executives. That And what we're going to be going over today is how to prepare for a trade show how to get your company ready, and how to make sure that your dollar investment is maximized and that you get the best use out of your time at a trade show. So who's EIP? EIP, we're a marketing company that deals mostly in emerging markets. So anything new or exciting or, or highly evolving, we focus on. We do this through a series of in-person trade shows and events that we host, as well as our digital marketing services, website development, uh, logo design, iconography, basically anything you would need to do to reach a customer through digital medium or in-person trade shows and expos. So let's get into the meat of the presentation. Today we're gonna to be, let's talk about prepping for an in-person expo, which is a little different than prepping for a, uh, a virtual expo, which hopefully we don't have to do too many of those anymore going forward. So what is an expo? An expo is basically an event where businesses and other industry professionals in a specific market can come together and network, demonstrate their products and services and provide a level of interaction that you just don't get on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, <clears throat> so, Angie, what do you think you see from being a professional on the floor that uh, companies really get from exhibiting in person at a show? Oh, for sure. Um, people like to work with people. They know um, people that they can, you know, get a feel for who they are and, and what have you. And the best way to do that is in person. Um, so definitely it's great to make those connections. Networking is fantastic. Uh, so there's that, and, you know, uh, definitely those in-person uh, opportunities are, are a great way to make connections. So we're going to talk a little bit and we're going to kind of go over some general ideas of you know, important tips for your booth. Megan's going to come in in a little while and talk about branding, which I think will, um, she can do a deeper dive into it and give you some real helpful information and pointers on it. So important tips for your booth. Your booth should be inviting, include logo, colors, and, prod and product images. And uh, I'm going to throw you on the spot, Megan. What's the one thing we preach about your logo colors and product images at a show? Consistency, for sure. You guys are gonna hear us say consistency a million times. You're gonna be sick of it a little bit, but it really is the key to your success. You want people to be able to recognize you. And if your logo and your colors are different from what people are used to seeing, they're not 
they might not go to your booth because they might think that you're a different company. Yeah. And, and Megan can get, she'll drill down a little bit into that and give you some really great ideas on how to get that consistent theme throughout the show. That's going to help you draw customers to you. Um, <clears throat> important tips again, maximize opportunities for attendees to engage with you as much as possible. And a little further in, we're going to discuss just how you can do that. Some little tips and tricks and things that we've seen successful exhibitors at our shows do. And what are the benefits of an in-person expo? Well, there's a lot of them, but um, the first one is it's easier to network. Look, um, this video communication is great. The ability to sit here and communicate with people all over the world via camera is awesome. We're trying it today, but what happened? Well, I set up this event and on the page it's supposed to go on, it's not working, even though we tested and it worked before. So obviously that's probably user error, but when you do an in-person show, you won't have that, you won't have that error popping up because you're physically there, you're in person, you're in front of the potential client or networking opportunity, having a face-to-face -face conversation. And uh, ultimately it really, does not hamper your ability to do business, it enhances it. And while virtual communication is good and it's getting better, in-person face-to-face interaction is just more welcoming. You can read a person better, you can see their body language, you can feel how the flow of the conversation's going, and you're just not talking to a two-dimensional figure on a television screen or a computer monitor. And again, less air, less technology, less areas for things to go wrong. And again, I think you build a little deeper interpersonal relationship and rapport with your customers by doing it face to face. That's probably why even in 2020 and 2021, uh, companies still had about 24% of their marketing budget allocated towards in-person expo events. <coughs> What to do before the expo? This is uh, really important. A lot of people, just a lot of companies will just go to trade shows. They're busy doing their jobs day to day, and they're not really prepping. So here's some ideas that we've come up with through five years of hosting shows, through talking to our successful exhibitors and finding out what people are doing and kind of how they're um, preparing for a show that ensures that they're m maximizing their revenue opportunities and their marketing and networking opportunities. So the first thing to do is to pick your expo team. You really wanna have a knowledgeable team working on your booth. It's essential. You want people there that understand the product, are outgoing, can speak clearly and concisely to the customers that you wanna speak to are able to network and make things happen. And again, um, Angela, if I if I could kind of lean on you a little bit, what else would you say would be important when bringing when having it when picking a team? What sort of things do you feel you would need? Yeah, uh, people who are outgoing for sure, but people who can um, eloquently. Uh, express you guys your companies uh, what not only what you can do uh, but your company culture you know who you're looking for how you can help them um, how you can best connect with them you know their pain points and how that you know uh, how your solution helps them um, so if you can really nail that down uh, those are the people definitely to bring i like to give this example if you're if you're a manufacturer and you have a highly complex technical product you want people that can speak to the complexities of that product maybe you bring a sales engineer or an engineer with you in or the person who designed the product but you maybe they're not as people oriented so have one of your other staff that is more outgoing work with them and then they can work together to present your product or item but keep those things in mind when you're setting up your team and i know sometimes maybe you're a small company and you only have four or five people 
and those are the four or five people that are going to be at the show. Just make sure that you can still come up with a plan of attack, <laughs> some ideas on how to do that, of how to interact with folks at the show. And uh, and I think what a big thing is, is training that team. Now that you have your team together, come up with an action plan. Shows are fast paced. You have to be able to think on your feet and interact with folks. And you want to make sure that your people are prepared. So any marketing materials you have, have them be familiar with that. Have them be familiar with the layout of the show floor. Let them know where some key networking opportunities may lie with regards to other customers or exhibitors or attendees and how you want to address that plan. And also if your company is, if you're, if you guys are not super comfortable with it, put them in positions that make them more com comfortable, build up on their strengths and maybe address the weaknesses. That's why we always do a SWAT check, you know? You know, you wanna make sure you know your strengths, what features contribute to your goals. You wanna know what weaknesses your team has going in. And you wanna know how you can create opportunities for your team. And, uh, some of the opportunities that we that you can create for your team are going to be things like this what's going to draw attention to our booth are you doing sponsorships at the show are you hosting a seminar session at that show do you have someone that can speak in an educational manner with regards to the market that you serve or the industry that you serve um angela with regards to seminars and sponsorships and i know you deal a lot with the sponsorships at our shows what are some things that you see happens when a customer utilizes sponsorships or a speaking session versus someone who just is only involved in having a booth? Yeah. Uh, so a booth is great. Uh, a booth is wonderful. It is fantastic uh, to get yourself out there. Uh, but what I've found personally is it's a few things. Um, it's having your booth. Uh, manage it well. And on top of that, uh, doing a speaking engagement, uh, speaking to the pains of your potential customer. Um, so, and basically you can wrap that around with, this is our solution. Come visit me at this booth, that sort of thing. Um, but even further in, it would be going into sponsorships. Uh, so if you're serious about wanting to have the most bang for your buck, then I really feel like sponsorship is the way to go. Um, for instance, uh, Lou Magazzo, uh, was a sponsor for New Jersey. Um, and he, we set him up a consultative booth. He did some speaking engagements, which, which were super, super well attended. Um, and then he was set up very, very well. He came away with, um, I, I don't even know, I, I believe it was 12 consultations there and some really, really good leads. Um, so Definitely, he wouldn't have got that attention if his name was not probably all over the place, right. uh, which is what we did for him. Um, so it's very important to get yourself out there, you know. So when, so when a customer is doing that, and this goes back to our theme of consistency, like I said, we're going to say that a lot. You have your logos everywhere. You're doing a seminar session. You're getting your potential your messaging out there most shows when you do speak at a show they're gonna market that for example what we'll do is we have a separate web page for each speaker that has a biography of the speaker a synopsis of what they're talking about and contact information below so they get that pre-market exposure and all that does is drive more engagement at the show because people are going to come specifically to see you and if a customer doesn't or an attendee does not know who you are or what you're doing if they're walking around a show and they see your picture everywhere your logo everywhere your employees are wearing logos and all over the floor it's a consistent thing it's going to make it's going to beg the question who are these guys who is xyz company and it's going to draw traffic to your booth which is the ultimate goal goal and give you some opportunities to do business setting up your booth um this stuff is kind of nuts and bolts uh it's pretty basic but 
Megan's got some ideas and some things that she recommends that I think is really unique to this. Set it up a booth. Number one, make sure you have an idea of what your booth is going to look like. <laughs> make sure your people know how to set it up, that they have the correct tools available, that they have the things in place and the time and the manpower to put the booth together if it's a physical booth maybe it's just something simple like a, a backdrop and a tablecloth and some flyers and whatnot it doesn't have to be fancy but make sure the team you guys know how you want to look you know what the layout is stuff like that that's real important once you're at the show this is where megan's marketing expertise kind of comes in like utilizing display space um Megan, maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, when you're setting up a booth, it's really important, um, like Mike said, even if it's not a super fancy booth, um, don't just put things on the table. You want to utilize things that um, all that vertical space that you have um, behind you, um, stuff that are at eye level and even above that. And why that's important is if people are walking around the show floor and they look across the room and they can see a backdrop or a banner with your company name or something like that, that's going to draw them from even across the floor. Where if you're just putting things like on your table or not very high up where people can see them, you're going to lose a little bit of that traffic potentially. That's true. It's very true. And then draw attendees in. Use Mimic. Use mute Mimic. Use music, a demo, host a giveaway, etc. Angie, what are some things that you've seen that really kind of drew attention into the floor? Yeah, so I really like that we do um, the fun little putt-putt golf thing that we do. Um, A, it's engaging, uh, you know, you're talking with people, you're giving them something to do, which is nice. Um, so they get uh, one of our branded um golf balls and they get to hit it in if they make it in we do um, a giveaway at the end um, and we also collect everybody's um, business cards to be able to you know do the drawing at the end which I think was really neat not only do they like I said gives them something to do we're collecting those leads uh, we're engaging with the customer so it does all of the things that you want it to do um, so yeah I think that's something we do really good. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that is a good idea. And I've seen I've seen crazier things, product demonstrations, you know, guys walking around on still two knows. You can get wild with it. Be creative. Be creative. That's one thing. And have fun at the shows. It is all about business, but it is also a place where you can interact and really show off your personality. Um, and then like have literature about your company with contact info. Uh, one thing that we do with regards to this at our own booths and our own shows and other shows that we may exhibit at is we made up a bunch of poker chips. And I don't know what it is about poker chips, but people grab them and then they we put a QR code on the back and they scan them. We can't keep poker chips in stock at these shows. It's a little mark, a little giveaway, a little thing. But it also not only is it a giveaway, it also doubles as a piece of contact information. It works every time we have boxes and boxes of them ordered and people love them. And I will see people playing with them, fiddling them. If you find something simple like that, it's inexpensive. It's a quick way to market. But also make sure when you do have literature or things that draw attention to you that you have your contact info on it. It doesn't matter if it's the most beautiful layout in the world. It's got all these pictures and videos, yada, yada, yada. If you don't have the correct contact info, the best email address, a working phone number, a working website, it's not going to do anything. And then four, don't hide behind a table. Be approachable. And you'll hear us mention this a lot because it is a common thing that happens among these shows. Like when you have someone who's maybe a little more introverted on your team and they're hiding back behind the table on their phone like this, there's not a lot of activity going on and people tend to just, there's so much noise and action on a show floor. People are just going to blow right by it. They might think you're not working. You're on a break. You're not involved. Um, one of the things that we do when we're hosting a show 
is we'll physically walk the floor and interact and engage with our exhibitors, check in on them, make sure they're going, try to get them up and moving. Um, but that's really important. Be approachable, be warm, be welcoming. And make it obvious what you do with clear signage. And this is a point where Megan's really going to get involved and kind of explain what that means. Again, consistent, let people know who you are, what you do, and be in front of them. They should be able to look at your booth and know who you are and what you do. Um, using tech at your booth, we touched a little a little bit on this and setting up your booth. TVs are great, play a slideshow, have an event going on. <laughs> Computers, if you don't have a big screen TV, you can put a computer up, bring up your website. One cool thing that we've seen, and this is when Angela's customer actually had a live stream going into their factory where they were manufacturing. What were they manufacturing, Angie? Uh, mints. Mints. Instead They're, of like a gummy. Uh, you're right. Yeah. Which sounds silly, but people were enthralled and they were watching it. And I've seen other people do that as well. If you have something cool going on at your office and you, you can set up a webcam and live stream right into it. It's not that hard, and uh, it's something different that's going to draw attention. People are going to go, hey, what's going on? What's that machine doing? What's What are those people doing? You know, as long as it's cool, right? And a uh, tablet, same thing as a computer, and, uh, and a badge scanner. <laughs> the badge scanner. Megan, you told a story about somebody that didn't have a badge scanner at an expo. You want to let the people know what kind of what that story was about? Yeah. Um, so we've seen so many times at our shows where people like you're trying to collect leads. Like that's the number one reason why you're at an expo. You're there to make connections and then generate drum up new business. And a lot of people, they just collect business cards and they'll put them in like a plastic bag or something. And multiple times at shows we've had exhibitors then lose those bags. And then they're asking us, have you seen my bag of, it was full of business cards. I don't know where it went. And that's where the badge scanner really, really comes in handy because then you will have a list. I, I believe ours generates an Excel list that they have access to. Right, it does. But it's just a lot easier. You're not trying to keep track of that physical item that you have the potential to lose. I had a customer literally email me yesterday regarding she just gave me two names and says, hey, do you have their contact info? Now, I personally don't see attendee info at the show. It's not part of purview of my job. So I don't collect that data or keep it underneath me. And it's, I don't just like pull it up. But what I did do is because I will go that extra mile for my customers, is I actually just Googled the two names she gave me and found the contact info for her. But again, it had she had that stuff in an Excel file stored away. She could have worked that a little bit better, but that happens. Um, so, and most shows have some sort of badge scanner. I highly suggest it. Most people end up doing it when they're at the show. Just do it ahead of time. It'll save you brain damage in the long run. Brand identity. This is where I get to shut my mouth and allow Megan to do her thing. And I'm very happy about it because I've been talking for a half hour already. Okay, so brand identity, um, we're going to break down some of these terms, and then we will talk about how it's important at an expo. But um, brand identity, those are all of those visual elements of your brand. So we've talked about color, we've talked about your logo, but even things like your font choice. Um, Comic Sans probably is not the best font choice if you want to be seen as super professional. I don't know what your company is. Maybe it'll work for you. Probably not, though. Um, and it's also the personality and the impression that your brand leaves. Um, some really great examples. I mean, we all think of McDonald's and the Golden Arches. Um, Coca-Cola is another big one. They have that classic red color that you think of. Um, we're based in Michigan, so one that I always think of, too, is Ford. They have that blue, but then they also have... Ford written in that really nice cursive font that I always think 
calls back to Henry Ford in the 20s when um, the automotive industry really first took off. So those are all things that you do want to keep in mind about your brand. Um, and this stuff matters because if you have a strong brand identity, that stays with your clients and even with potential customers that you haven't worked with yet. Um, and good or bad. So if they have a great experience with you at the show, um, they will, if they see maybe your brand color out in the world, they'll think, oh, I talked to someone <coughs> whose business that reminds me of. And then they might call you if they need your services. But then with the personality part, um, people will never forget how your brand made them feel. Um, calling back to some of those big brand examples, I'm sure a lot of us have eaten at McDonald's. You remember how you feel when you go there, uh, maybe on a road trip when you were younger or something. So those little things that we attach those to a brand. And if you have a good experience, you're going to build that brand loyalty. Um, and some tips for how to build that. You need to ask yourself, who are your target audiences? What are things that they value? Are you looking mostly to get industry people? Are you looking more for a B2C experience where you want to draw in more consumers? Um, and like I said, what cause, like what do they value? What causes do they support? What are their goals? Uh, look at the competition. You don't want to copy what they're doing, of course, but especially for some smaller companies, this is a really good place to start. See maybe what they're doing well and why their brand resonates with people. Um, like I said, resist the urge to copy them, but maybe there are things that you can borrow or kind of tweak that will fit in with your company and your potential audiences. And then kind of tying into that strong impression that you can leave, try to build an emotional connection with your target audience through your brand. Don't just sell your product and services. Make it seem like you genuinely care, because I'm sure you all do. Um, you do care about your clients, <coughs> and you want them to do well. It's not just about pushing your product or your service. And then our favorite tip, consistency, consistency, consistency. All right. And being consistent, I'm going to consistently flip back and forth between the pages. But yeah, we love consistency over here in branding and marketing and everything that we do because it just builds stronger, uh, more cohesive uh, marketing. And so brand messaging, this is similar to your brand identity, but where this differs is this is really how your company communicates. This is the story that you're telling through your brand. So it's less those visual elements and it's more those things like your tagline, perhaps. Like, we all think Nike, just do it. You can just hear, just do it, and you'll know that's Nike. Um, there are certain things that will draw attention to your brand. Um, I like to think of Super Bowl commercials as a really big brand messaging thing, like uh, Budweiser with the Clydesdales and the little puppy. They always try to create, like, a really nice feeling and when you watch those commercials it's not about them they don't push the product on you and say buy our beer they create that feeling for you they tell you that story and that's really at the heart of your brand messaging it's through the language you use events that you host that you show you're a part of and this matters similarly in the way that brand identity does because you're, you're really working on creating content, creating messages that resonate with your audience and create that brand loyalty through an emotional connection. People want to do business with people that they care about, that they have an established relationship with. And some tips for how to do that. What are your values as a company and what are your goals? If you don't know yourselves as a company, if your expo team doesn't know your mission statement or things like that, you're not going to be able to communicate your brand or communicate those things to your clients or your potential clients. So, Very key. so Megan, at that point, like when we're talking with regards to prepping for a trade show, would it be important for someone to 
work with their marketing team, their social media content team, so they know how to you take that branding and that messaging and utilize it in a physical format like a trade show booth? Most definitely. Um, I would even say, so your social media team, if you have one, I do understand, you know, some smaller companies might not have a full social media team. Um, but engaging with those people who interact with your customers in a different way than your sales staff does is very vital. Um, because with social media, usually they're the ones making the posts, responding to comments. They're hearing that direct feedback from clients or potential clients on a more regular basis. And they have their finger really on the pulse of the current company culture, to borrow Angie's term from earlier. Um, and just keeping those things, like we say, consistent, that's really important. And that ties into knowing your audience and making sure that that brand message aligns with the things that they care about. And one other thing like we shouldn't forget if you're launching a new company or launching into a new market one thing that people don't think about you can exhibit at a show and you can do that market research at the show and figure out what is going to resonate about your products and services with that customer so you can build a stronger brand you might have a great idea and you might have all the funding in your company launch but until you get out there and in front of people that's really where the rubber meets the road. And an expo is a great laboratory for you to do that type of research. You find out, hey, all these things you think might work, they might not resonate with the customers. And maybe something from out of left field will come at you. That's another way to utilize an expo, not just for generating sales, not just for uh, you know presence, but for marketing and market research. Definitely. And that's where that ties into that last point. Um, brands are not perfect, just like people aren't perfect. And so a trade show is a really great opportunity to maybe try out a new tactic or see if your new tagline or something like that will resonate with people. Because even if it doesn't work out, people can still tell when you're being genuine. And like we've said, people like working with companies that seem like they're full of real people. Exactly. So how does this all tie in to branding at an expo? Uh, we've sprinkled a little bit of that stuff in, but then these are just a few things that we do want to hit on. Um, be obvious. At an expo, that is not the time to be shy. You want to make sure that attendees at that expo can take one look at your booth, your booth setup, your employees, and know exactly what your company does. This could be from making sure your logo is clear and easy to see, easy to read, um, and any of your signage. Um, you don't want to have people work too hard because they might not engage with your booth if they have no idea what you do. And then highlight your brand, similar to being obvious. You want to be seen outside of your booth display. What are ways that you can customize? Do you have promotional products for attendees to check out, like we mentioned that we do the golf balls and the poker chips. Um, it could even be something, depending on your budget, as small as branded pens and notebooks for people to take. Um, so then maybe they can be taking notes during any seminar sessions they attend with your branded materials. You could do a video slideshow at your booth where you highlight some of your latest projects you've worked on, um, anything like that. You don't want to miss an opportunity to showcase your brand. I know we offer some um, sponsorships with our swag bags that all of our attendees um, carry around the show. So those could have your company logo. Uh, we also do lanyards. And a lot of shows do have those opportunities. So you definitely, if you have the budget for it, definitely want to consider looking into those opportunities. And of course, consistency is key. If you have a one logo on some of your products, use that logo throughout the entire show. That way people will remember you a little better. And then just a few tips on maybe a little more tangible ways that you can do this and things to consider. Your staff is free branding for your company. Um, and I'm actually gonna bring in Angie. How have you seen 
how staff can really help your brand at a show. Yeah, so definitely wearing the shirts um, and looking like a cohesive group, you know, is super important. Uh, I know that Mike has a really funny story about um, some people that uh, were at, I believe it was the last show. Mike? No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I remember um, one of our companies came in and uh, they were just ridiculous. But the one thing they were is they were consistently ridiculous. These guys had on bright red jumpsuits that were like coveralls with the big giant logo. And people were just stopping them as they were walking from their booth or just walking around. They walked around for two days straight in these ridiculous jumpsuits. But they were a soil company and they did draw attention. And people did want to have a conversation with them because they stood out. Now, we'll talk a little bit about attire after this. That might be an extreme, but it was consistent. It had the low, it had the branding on it, and it drew eyes. I mean, depending on the type of show, you might not want to do that at a Fentech show. Uh, but, you know, at a Canatech show or any other, or a, a B2B show, maybe uh, you're, you're selling farm implements, something like that. Stuff like that could go over quite well. Yeah, that's a really, really great example. Um, and like I mentioned before, too, setting up a slideshow of your latest projects, something that, like up on a TV or a computer screen that people are stopping at your booth and they're watching and they can see, oh, these are some of the things they've worked on before. Um, maybe something with client testimonials. So then people will get an idea of people you've worked with before and how you've helped other people. I've already mentioned unique promo products, and I think we've already talked about the golf balls and the poker chips. Um, and then consider signage that breaks down the more complex aspects of your business. That really great example we had from earlier about that um, live stream of one of Angie's customers with the mints. If you can show people something like an inside look onto things that are a little more complicated about your company that will help your brand at an expo, because you can then skip that really complicated conversation and go right into either that sales conversation or right, they might have a question off of it. So then you can kind of skip some of that stuff and work really um, work more on building that relationship through your brand. That's very true. And like, if you have a super complex process, you want to make it simple so someone can digest it in about 30 seconds. <laughs> And if you can do that, people are going to be happy. Video is a great way to do it because it kind of shows really what customers are concerned with. It's not the process. They don't want to see how the sausage is made. They want to see the end result. Well, if you can kind of show them the process, which you go through, build a little value with your customers and show them the end result in a quick digestible snippet, it will pay dividends down the road. Let's talk about attire. We just talked about the de the guys wearing the jumpsuits. That was fun, um, but for the most ca for the most part, business casual is fine. You don't necessarily need uniforms. You don't necessarily need suits unless that's the image you want to portray. Um, we always like business casual polos, t shirts with uh, matching logos and branding. Make sure things are clean. If you um, didn't bring extra clothes, make sure <laughs> make sure you bring stuff. This is all stuff everyone knows, but just make sure that it's clean, professional, and you represent the company at all times on the show floor because you're not just an employee or an owner of a business. You're also a walking billboard for what you do, and people want to do business with people that have their stuff together, so look like you have your stuff together. Um, don't wear old, worn-out stuff, you know, I always try to be branded. I always try to have a logo on you. Super important, if at all possible. They're looking to work with the top businesses in the industry, and they'll overlook your booth if you don't stand out as professional. Because they're about to give you a bunch of money. They don't want to give to somebody that doesn't know how to dress themselves. I don't think we really have that problem too often on the floor, though. All right, Angie, did you have your Red Bull? Are you ready to go? <laughs> You're up. You're up in front of this crowd's fired up. They've been waiting for 45 minutes. 
Yeah. So let's go to the bang. Let's go. <laughs> I dig it. Um, so um, something that I think is super important at an expo, energy, your behavior. Um, every People want to talk to people who are engaging and uh, uplifting and uh, energetic. Um, no one wants to talk to someone who's sleeping at their booth. You know what I mean? So it's super important to be super, as high energy as you could be. Um, it, make sure you're bringing your most outgoing people um, and make sure that you're talking to people. Uh, make sure that you're asking engaging questions. Um, so, you know, if you know that this a certain customer that you're going after has a pain point that you can solve. Um, try to get them to nail that down. Uh, make sure that you're finding out what they need and 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 try to you know come together on how you can solve that issue. Um, do not hide behind your phone. It is the most irritating thing that I see at the expos. Um, it, it really is. Um, you know, nobody wants to look at this. This is not exciting. You know, that's not fun. Um, so it doesn't look like you're engaged with them and they don't want to engage with you. Um, be interactive at your booth. I think it's super important to have something that they can touch or look at or hold on to or, you know, some sort of something that causes them to engage with you, causes that interaction. Um, and it is a little more fun and like, and, uh, you know, lets them understand what your product does. Um, so as far as behavior goes, your behavior as an exhibitor, you should be up and moving a hundred percent. Um, you know, don't sit behind the table. I mean, you can, I guess, but it's not ideal. Um, uh, the people who get the most interaction and engagement are people who are up and engaging. Um, so if you're out in front of your lighting, say you're a lighting guy and you're out in front of your lighting and you're pulling people in, Hey, check this out. You know, look at how this works. Um, people are going to engage with you. Uh, if you're behind a table, they will not. Um, so it seems like a no brainer, but you'd be surprised. Uh, <laughs> Um, have a man at your booth at all times. That's super important. If you're not there, you're missing opportunities a hundred percent. So, um, getting up and, and making sure that there's someone there to talk to anybody who's walking by is a good idea. Um, don't leave early. Ugh, another thing that I super hate, um, you know, uh, it's towards the end of the last day, you know, what's one hour going to do? I'll just pack up and go home. Um, you never know who's going to walk in. You, you've made an investment. You're there for a reason. Um, you're there for those interactions and those connections and, uh, be there, be there the whole time. Uh, you know, what's, what's 10 more minutes going to kill you? You know what I mean? Like, um, if you've made that investment, you should be there. Um, and also my, um, biggest pet peeve, collect your leads, uh, Again, you've made an, uh, an investment to be there. You need to collect your leads. You need to uh, follow up with your leads. Most people will not do that. Um, and that's, it's like, it seems like such a no brainer. It seems so simple, but um, 100% is very necessary. So follow up with your people, make sure you're staying engaged with them. Um, not all sales happen on the, on the show floor. Um, sometimes it takes a month or two. Um, so make sure you're staying engaged with those people. Awesome. So like just to kind of summarize some of that stuff, like when you're talking with regards to energy and behavior and like things like packing up early, I know that Megan works a lot at the front desk. I work a lot at the front desk. We Every show we'll go, Hey, we'll have an attendee come up. They're like, Oh man, I'm late. I haven't had it. I just, my first chance to get in here. I'm really looking to see Bob's soil. And Bob Soil left 20 minutes beforehand. And you're like, well, I just opened up a large grow operation and I need 10,000 pounds of soil. And he's not there to get that. That stuff happens all the time. I've seen six-figure deals be written on the floor the last hour of the show. There's a lot of things that happen during that time frame. But energy, and, we go, and I think that energy and excitement and how you interact with people really will be there if you plan for it and you're consistent and you 
do an assessment and you train your team, all those things we talked about are going to build towards them having confidence and the ability to have energy on the show floor because they feel confident in the product. They feel confident in how they're representing themselves. They have a plan in place and they're ready to go and make things happen. So let's talk about some expo do's and expo don'ts. Number one. When you're talking to anyone, I don't care if it's an exhibitor, an attendee, a networking event, ask engaging questions. Don't just ask questions and then sit there and wait to reply. Ask open-ended questions. Ask questions that are pertinent to the customer. Get them to talk to you. Build that relationship because you never know how far it's going to go. Um, there's always an opportunity. Um, and use visuals and consistent branding i think megan you really drove into this what's one point about visuals and consistent branding that you would say is something that people need to do or be aware of i think one of the biggest ones is making sure your team is wearing branded stuff um like we do t-shirts but that is one visual and one consistent branding like your staff like we've mentioned are your number one marketing and branding people at a show people will maybe talk to them if even if they're standing in the lunch line getting something to eat or grabbing like a quick snack people will see that logo and people will be like oh i'm gonna go talk to them after this when i can um so i think that's probably one of the biggest things to pay attention to for branding at an expo be on time if you're the last person in the door you're you maybe you miss the, the actual setup day and you want to come set up that more the next morning early people are going to be annoyed when you're wheeling your cart of treasures to your booth trying to weave through the crowd and then uh make sure that you're there so you're and if you're going to be out of your booth make sure you put some sort of sign because people will be looking for you if you've done invested the time you've put in the money, you've done all the little things and you've done those behaviors consistently, you should have pretty good success at a show. So make sure and that means people are engaged and going to be looking for you. Let them know where you're at. So if you're going to leave the booth, put a sign up saying, hey, I'll be back by 315. Or, or if you're in a seminar, most places will have some sort of sign for you to put up saying that you're speaking, things like that. Um, Reach out to participants. This is one thing I highly suggest to companies is to pre-market the show themselves. There are going to be opportunities and the expos are going to market the show, but you get involved with your media team, with your social media team, with your marketing, get involved with everybody to let people know that you're going to be at an event. I know with us personally, if you're doing one of our events and you ask me, you're like, hey, Mike, could you guys design a, a gra an announcement graphic? Yeah, I can get that done. And, and we do it for all of our speakers. We'll do a headshot saying I'm speaking at so-and-so event. But get that stuff out there. Let people know ahead of time. Because the more people that are excited about seeing you or maybe they've really wanted to have a meeting with your company or they have some networking opportunity or some synergistic thing going on, they'll travel to come see you in person if it's in a region that you're not normally in. Maximize those opportunities. Let everybody know what you're going to be doing. And then, you know, run a consistent campaign leading up to it. It's only going to make you have a more successful show. And then uh, customize where applicable. I think we've talked about this in the past, ladies. Um, you know, anything specific, Megan, Angela? Definitely just go with the flow. Um, yes, it's great to be prepared and have your spiel ready, but if things aren't clicking with your audience or the people you're trying to engage with, don't be afraid to kind of change tactics a little bit customize things to see if that gets you a little better that really comes back to on the fly market research right <laughs> you know you're gonna learn hey this this might not be working but if i do this this will work and get some more engagement and then connect with other exhibitors angie uh angie and i do similar jobs 
she knows this probably as good as anybody. How what percentage of business gets done exhibitor to exhibitor at any one of our shows? Golly, I can't tell you percentages precisely, right. but I can tell you that every single expo <laughs> since I've been uh, working with everybody here, uh, that I have seen multiple deals happen right on the floor um, between you know exhibitors. So absolutely there's a lot of opportunity not just with your attendees but also with the people that are sitting in right next to you so i had two companies at a show in the middle of an ice storm in oklahoma that formed a partnership that is a rather large and uh and the nutrients space they're doing nutrients and and uh soil and their products work together and they came up with some pretty unique ideas i don't know if it's gone to market yet but i do know it was a pretty big deal and that happened at a show, like I said, we just got hit with a freak storm, and uh, but people were there, and they were making business happen. Expo don'ts. I think we've kind of touched on all these, but we'll go through them one more time, just because it's really important stuff. Don't leave your booth unattended. Um, there's nothing more awkward than somebody coming up to us asking us where your company is. So we'll show them on the map. They're like, no, I don't physically know where they're at. <laughs> um, you know, and then they get frustrated and we try to find you, we'll page, but you know, you could be off doing something else. Just put a sign up, letting people know when you'll be back. It's real simple. Don't pack up early. Again, um, it's a pet peeve and it, annoys other exhibitors and it annoys attendees when they're looking for you if you can't wait the last half hour of the show just like everybody else i mean why did you invest the time and money um it's not like anything's going to get moving you're not going to be able to walk through the aisles if the show's still going on so you know don't pack up early just stay till the designated time um don't show up without a plan i think that's the biggest don't make sure you have a plan of action if you don't know or you're concerned give one of us a call we can give you some ideas we don't it doesn't matter if it's a show we're hosting we like to connect and help people so if you're doing some show some other company whatever feel free to reach out to me or angie or megan on linkedin and go hey we're doing this what do you think do you think this would work feel free we're always open to having that conversation um, and then hopefully we will do our job and sell you a booth at our shows too, <laughs> just to be transparent. Um, don't hide behind your phone, your booth and phone. Angie gets really mad about it. We have to <laughs> like, hold her back. But I mean, if you don't do that, like yeah. I can understand, like maybe you have an important phone call, but if, if, I walk by and I see that I'm like, that's going to be the person that's going to complain that they didn't get any customers, so on and so forth. You have to be interactive on the show floor. You have to be proactive. And there's a lot of things you can do. A lot of people just think it's the work in the booth. It's not just working in the booth. If you have staffing and abilities, have somebody attend a seminar. If there's networking opportunities in the, in the seminar events, you'll have a pass to go to it at most shows. Yeah. Do that. You know? Yeah. If you have, um, uh, so I, it's, excuse me. <laughs> um, so I've seen people who uh, will go to other seminars that kind of touch on the pain points of the person that, uh, you know, the, the people that they're looking to get in front of. I think that's brilliant. Absolutely. Go to the other seminars. If you have somebody else to work the booth, you know, go connect with those people. There's always a networking opportunity at that point. And it's really, um, it's a good idea. And you're just more involved in the show and you're showing support for your fellow exhibitors. It goes a long way. Or if you have a, a company that maybe you're doing business with or a vendor, go into their seminars, you know, support them because you guys are gonna also have some mutual customers. Um, don't just start pitching somebody. I've had this happen at shows where I'm working for the show I'm walking up to say hi, and before I can even stick a hand out and say hello, they're pitching me on something without knowing who I am, knowing that I can't possibly buy their product because I don't own the type of business they hire. Slow it down a step or two. Work up to the pitch. 
you know, now if somebody comes up and says, hey, tell me what you guys are and what you do, then yeah, go for it. But if someone just says, hello, I'm just looking right now, you know, slow it down a little. Work into the pitch. You got to ease it in. And then uh, give handouts without engaging. It's the same thing, man. If somebody shoves something in my hand, it's literally going in the trash next thing. It happens a lot if you're out in a city or you're going into a restaurant or or a bar. People are handing out flyers and shoving things in your hand. Nobody likes that. Use it as an opportunity to slow them down a little bit and have a conversation. And they'll just see if they're a good fit for, you know, what you're handing them. And here's where we're going to go to Q&A. Now, our LinkedIn live site isn't seem, didn't seem to work. I don't know how much interaction that we're going to be getting with regards to Q&A. But I have a solution for that. Um, I really think that uh, when you do a show and if you take in the time and you put in the consistency, you will generate higher quality leads than most other marketing avenues because it's face to face. Um, Megan, did you have any final thoughts? Um. I'm just going to hit home again, consistency with your brand. Uh, you want people to be able to recognize you. Um, if you need tips on how to do that, um, you can always connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always open to that. Um, we want to make sure that you guys are successful. And if it's not at one of our shows, you really want to put your best foot forward at any show you're attending. So really keep that branding consistency in mind. And Angela? What are your final thoughts? Um, I feel like you know, <laughs> um, I, I feel like uh, the most important thing takeaway, you know, is um, be energetic, be ready to talk to people, be ready to connect and find out what your customers' pain points are, um, understand what is important to them, and how the, your products can um, help alleviate whatever issue they might be having. And, uh, and make those connections and follow up on those leads. Awesome. Now, one thing uh, that we you, you might not know is that we actually have this presentation in an ebook format authored by Megan. She did a wonderful job on it. It goes a little more in depth and we will um, provide the link and wait for you to download this. If you're interested, would like to share it with your team, it's a great resource. It's free. You just go to the, the link here, and I'll, we'll also throw that up in the chat and throw that out into the uh, into the um, into the post uh, live stream email that will be going out, so you can do that. And if you have any questions, you can reach us here at the office at 810-547-1349. Ladies, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate the effort that you put into it and all the help with getting me to do this. I apologize that the LinkedIn live link didn't work. I don't know what's going on there. I will figure that out. But good news is it did go out across all our other channels. So uh, people were able to watch it and find it. And, These are uh, all just an opportunity to improve. So thank you for having me. No problem. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. All right. Well, you ladies have a wonderful day. I'm going to end the stream. And, all, right. all right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>